Hi, this is Dr. Darren Schmidt at the Nutritional Healing Center of Ann Arbor. And this video is about insulin and how to reduce its activity in the body. So when you have too much insulin in the body, the cells become insulin resistant and then the body is um, not able to digest carbohydrates correctly and you end up getting um, diabetes and other health conditions. So here's the title, Insulin Activity Control. Now, 23% of insulin activity is controlled by carbohydrate intake. 10% of insulin activity is controlled by protein intake. And fat intake has no effect on insulin. So I put 0% of insulin activity is controlled by fat intake. And then so we're left, we're left with 67% of insulin activity, and that is controlled by hormones, other hormones, and lifestyle choices. So I'm going to talk about that at the very end and how to control insulin through hormones and lifestyle choices. Okay, so here's the relationship of hormones and how um, they affect one another. I'm going to start at the bottom and work up. And it's not hard. And what we have are um, triangles which represent teeter-totters. So this teeter-totter right here is the first one and we have insulin on one side and human growth hormone on the other side. So when human growth hormone is enhanced, insulin goes down and that's a good thing. So how do you enhance human growth hormone? Deep sleep, exercise to sweat, and low carb diet and eating adequate amounts of fat and protein. So that's one way to control insulin is through human growth hormone. Now we have um, a synergy here between insulin and cortisol. Cortisol is a stress hormone. And when cortisol is up because of stress, then insulin goes up also. So you want to keep your stress down. And the way that you do that, do that is by solving your problems. Now a lot of people say, to keep your stress down by going on vacation or getting a massage or getting a you know a pedicure or something I don't I don't buy into that because you're just escaping and you're not actually solving anything so if you need to solve some problems in your life go online and search some classes out or a book or life improvement courses or something like that and get your problems solved instead of just escaping because when you escape for a vacation or for a massage, you come back and guess what? All your problems are still there. Okay, now with cortisol being the stress hormone, what we have, we have another teeter-totter here. And it's related to a hormone called oxytocin. Oxytocin is like the feel-good hormone. And it means, in its original Latin or Greek, I can't remember, it means first birth. So when a woman is preparing when her body's preparing to give birth oxytocin goes way up it relaxes all the ligaments so that the pelvis can open up and then the baby's born now the oxytocin hormone is really high that makes the woman very loving and so that that way she won't reject the baby so oxytocin is the loving feel good hormone so when oxytocin goes up cortisol goes down and when cortisol goes down, insulin goes down. So that's the relationship there. We have another relationship here. This teeter-totter is between cortisol, the stress hormone, and testosterone. So to, when, when your body, male or female, when your body's nicely filled up with testosterone, you feel strong and nothing bothers you too much. And um, I have videos on this regarding Orchex and testosterone, and you can look those up. So it's written here, mellow. So somebody who's filled with testosterone, they, they can, it's easier for them to be more mellow. So how do you increase testosterone? You, you eat really good quality meat and other sources of fat and protein, and then you exercise. So when testosterone goes up, cortisol goes down, and insulin goes down. All right, now we have another relationship here. Here's a teeter-totter. And we have insulin related to what's called the sex hormone 
binding globulin. So the sex hormone binding globulin will, um, it's a protein and it um, um, holds on to hormones. And when the sex hormone binding globulin is uh, decreased, which is a bad thing, that it's bad because then the insulin goes up. And so sex hormone binding globulin is an antagonist to testosterone. So it brings the testosterone down. So we have a relationship in two ways related to testosterone, through cortisol and through the sex hormone binding globulin. Okay, and then I wrote up here DHEA, which you've probably heard of if you listen or study alternative healthcare hormones. DHA makes testosterone and estrogen. So you could take potentially take um, DHEA as a supplement, then your testosterone goes up, then your cortisol goes down, and then your insulin goes down. So we have all these relationships. One more is that progesterone, I wrote, actually there's two more. Progesterone um, puts cortisol in its place. Like it, So the more p progesterone there is, the less... Um, effect that cortisol has on the body. So I put an X here between progesterone and cortisol. And now the last one is thyroid hormone medications. They mess with insulin. So I wrote thyroid medications mess with insulin and then I wrote this curly arrow up to insulin. So thyroid medications will create insulin resistance and increase it 300 to 400%. So we don't want insulin resistance. We want insulin to be communicating to all the cells at 100%. Okay, so now there's ways, now getting to this lifestyle aspect, how to control 67% of um, insulin activity. I've talked about the hormones, and I'm going to talk about lifestyle. And really there's four things I want to go over. Number one is the type of exercise, and that's called burst training. And you can look this up online. It's where you do high intensity activity for a minute or maybe 90 seconds and that's it. But you go really hard and you're out of breath. And then you have to rest for like five minutes and you do it again. And you only do it like three times. So you don't, you're not like on a treadmill for an hour and a half. No, you're, you're exercising for less than 15 minutes total. That's what burst training is. That changes everything related to it builds up muscle really well, it increases testosterone, and that controls insulin. Okay, number two is called intermittent fasting. And what that means basically is eating two meals a day, and you're skipping breakfast. Or you could be skipping dinner too, but you only have two meals a day. And those meals are awesome. So let's say you have a really good lunch and a really good dinner and you're full and you're satisfied and what you ate was so good that it keeps you going all night repairing your body while you're asleep and you wake up in the morning and you have good energy and then you eat at lunch. And um, this intermittent fasting is what our ancestors did 300 years ago, a thousand years ago um, because... Um, um, what would happen is they would um, feast on something at dinner time. This is just history. Feast at dinner time and wake up and not hung just not be hungry, and then eat later later in the day. And there's a lot of research on intermittent fasting and its benefits. And there are groups of people that do this through like corporate wellness programs and stuff like that. And there's a guy that lost um, 100 pounds in 10 months by doing intermittent fasting. Now, the lunch and dinner are also very smart. They're low-carb, adequate amounts of fat and protein. Okay, so I'm running out of room. I'm going to actually write um, number three, which would be called diet variation. And so I'm going to write this ratio of 5, 1, 1. So diet variation means you eat low-carb for five days, and then one day of high-carb, and then one day of fasting. So again, this is what our ancestors would do. They'd kill a deer and eat deer meat for five days. And then on, on the sixth day, um, wander upon a patch of raspberries and eat fruit all day, which is high carb. And then on the sixth day, they wouldn't have any food. So you're really mixing up the, the food intake and the metabolism changes and 
you're doing what our DNA evolved on. So that's diet variation, a 511. And the last one is, um, I'm just going to put it out there, high-fat diet. A high-fat diet is actually um, very, very therapeutic. It's very good for the heart. It's extremely important for the nervous system and all the hormones. So high-fat could be, I've been on uh, greater than, uh, greater than 50% of my calories have been from fat since the year 2000. And the, I'm getting this information from a speaker that I heard talk. And his, he said that his diet is 85% of his calories come from fat. So 85%. Now, you can't run and tell this to your um, medical doctor because they're going to totally flip out and say that that's crazy and all that stuff. But no, that... There's plenty of research that shows that this is really good information. And if you have a healthcare provider saying you need to do low carb, I'm sorry, um, high fiber, high carb, there's no research to back that up. So this is my presentation on insulin activity control. And I hope you could read my writing. I hope you could follow me. You may need to uh, watch this again. And if you watch it again, draw it out on paper with your own hand. And that way you can follow along and it'll make more sense. So um, enjoy.